DB Arkansas hasn't played since March 9th at Central Arkansas. She injured her hand in her final at bat of that game. Has been out, returns today. She'll be hitting in the number six spot in Arkansas. Certainly glad to have her back, batting 370 with five home runs and 16 RBIs before her injury. Be interesting to see how she performs, really was swinging it well early on in the season. The starting lineup for the 16 and 13 Bears of Missouri State will be led off by Daphne Plummer, their leading hitter amongst everyday players, hitting 337. Peyton Menace, Tess Weekly, Darian Frost, the catcher is in the cleanup spot. Followed by the pitcher, Madison Hunsaker. No surprise to see her in the hitting lineup even when she is the starting pitcher as she can do some damage. Kelly Metter, Kelsey Lewis, Skyler Shaw, and Bailey Greenlee round up the lineup for Missouri State. And there is Daphne Plummer, the 337 hitter on the year, a 408 on base percentage from that leadoff spot. And this Missouri State lineup now gets to see Autumn Storms. For some of them, it's not going to be the first time they've seen her, but... Autumn Storms is the starter today for Arkansas. Storms a drop ball heavy pitcher, throws a really nice change up, really good curve. You'll see a lot of ground balls with these batters facing Autumn Storms. And as you mentioned, some of these Missouri State Bears will be familiar with Autumn Storms. She got the win in that game two years ago through four innings, giving up six hits and just one earned run. 5-0-2, your first pitch here in Fayetteville. The sun has peaked out after a mostly overcast day. Turned out to be a beautiful day at the ballpark. Here this afternoon, temperatures in the low 70s. Wind could play a factor, and uh, if it does, it probably won't do any favors for the pitching staffs. It's blowing out to left center field today, 10 to 15 miles an hour, as this is fouled off by the leadoff, Daphne Plummer. And this is exactly what we expected to see from Plummer in this first at bat. Coach Holly Hesse told us that she sees a lot of pitches. It's one of the reasons why this senior is batting leadoff. She likes to make the pitcher work deep into the count, gets to see a lot, and then has a lot of information to relay to her teammates. Defensively for Arkansas today, Danielle Gibson at first, Keeley Huffon at second, Braxton Burnside at short, Hannah Gamel at third base, and Kayla Green, of course, behind the plate. 2-2 pitch, ground ball. Fielded by Huffine, and there's one down. Nice range by Huffine over to her right side, and Courtney Dyfel told us that Huffine really has a better range than a lot of second basemen that play the game. Very athletic. Two steps over, gets in front of it, has to get rid of it quickly in time to get Plummer, gets her by a good half step. Nice solid play by Huffine to start the game. Here's Peyton Menace to the plate. These Bears hitters being aggressive at first pitches. The outfield today for Arkansas, Hannah McEwen in left, Sam Torres in center, and Ali Monzo in right. And as we talked to Arkansas coach Courtney Dyfel earlier this afternoon, she just continued to praise the attitude of the veteran Keeley Huffine in all the positions they've moved her around. It's not about whether she favors one or the other. It's, yeah, sure, wherever you need <laughs> me to go, right? Well, really, that's the attitude of this entire Arkansas team. You know, Nicole Duncan has been subbing in at third base for Hannah Gamble while she's been injured. Valerie Ventura. This hit to third, Gamble, and that's got to feel good for her just to get back on the field and have one hit her way. Gamble with the 5-3 put out for out number two here in the top of the first. Always nice to get that first one underneath the belt. Gamble ranging to her glove side, 1-2. That's a routine play for a third baseman, but... I think she knew we were talking about her coming back into the lineup, but really anyone has been willing to do anything asked by Courtney Dyfel for the team this season. Tess Weekly takes a strong hack at the first pitch, the first right-handed batter that Autumn Storms has faced. And for Storms, the senior 1.51 ERA, making her 10th start of the season and 14th appearance here today. And the strikeout to walk ratio, good as usual for Storms, 34 to six, and opponents hit just 182 against the right-hander from Temecula, California. Storms had a fantastic outing Friday in that complete game win over Auburn. Only gave up four hits. Just one walk to four strikeouts, as you were mentioning, the walk to strikeout ratio. Tess Weekly, the sophomore in that third spot in the order. Seven extra base hits on the year and comes in second on the team with 14 runs driven in. Well, 
I don't think the crowd liked that call very much, but Storm's trying to establish that inner part in the plate here early on. Arkansas's got the sign. Storm's 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. She got her to chase outside. And it's a nice 1-2-3 inning for Arkansas and Autumn Storms, thanks to pitches like this. Got weekly to chase, and Arkansas will come to bat in the bottom of the first. Arkansas and Autumn Storms retiring Missouri State in order in the top of the first. And to the circle for the lefty, Madison Hunsaker, the lineup for the Razorbacks, Sam Torres, who's done such a great job in the starting role as the center fielder leads off, followed by Braxton Burnside. And we'll see Hannah McEwen in the three hole in this first inning for the Razorbacks. Sam Torres, the second that she got her opportunity, Dorian, she has just taken off and not ever looked back. Torres hitting over 400 leading this lineup and Courtney Dyfel told us that Torres only really got an opportunity because somebody got hurt but she has made the most of it. She has been one of the most consistent batters and that's because she has such great control of the plate. She knows how to read the field. And as you saw there, she checks her swing. They're gonna say she didn't go. She's also very selective in terms of what pitches she goes after. She's been hitting well in that nine spot today getting the opportunity in the leadoff spot for the Razorbacks. Two on from Hunsaker. Evens the count. Hunsaker on the year a 1.75 ERA. Six and three record on the line today as she makes her 17th appearance and her 11th start. She's gone the distance three times in her previous 10. 59 strikeouts in 60 innings pitched. Is this grounded a second? No problems for Peyton Menace for out number one, and we can introduce you to the Bears defensively. Tess Weekly plays first. Menace at second there, just made that play. Daphne Plummer is the shortstop. Kelsey Lewis down at third base. Kelly Metter in left field. Skyler Shaw in center. Bailey Greenlee in right. And Darian Frost is behind the plate as the battery mate of Hunsaker, the lefty. And in steps Braxton Burnside. Burnside goes after the first pitch she sees, and you have to imagine after being walked in every plate appearance against Auburn on Saturday, she is going to be anxious to swing at anything she might be able to get a bat on. It was only a matter of time before we saw somebody do that, I think, at this stage <laughs> in the season. I mean, she barely, uh, barely made it into the month of April before she set Arkansas's single season home run record. Burnside now sitting with 19, the 18th homer of the season, which came in the aforementioned Auburn series in game one. That was the one that gave her the record all by her lonesome. Took the record from former Arkansas great Nicole Schroeder. Burnside today named the SEC Home Player of the Week for the second time this season as Darian Frost goes out to talk to Madison Hunsaker. And one of the things that is amazing to me about Braxton Burnside is you take a look at her numbers from the Auburn series. Four walks on Saturday. She still hit 571 for the weekend. So certainly maximizing the opportunities that she does get. And there it is right there. And it wasn't uh, as blatant <laughs> as... What you might chalk up as an intentional walk, but it's still one of those where, and when we Coach call Hesse those was the asked, unintentional, intentional right. walks. <laughs> <laughs> the only aspect of that is there's not uh, much of a drop off in terms of dangerous hitters. Of course, Burnside is in a category of her own when it comes to the power swing, but Anna McEwen 
one of the best hitters that this program has ever seen and without a doubt one of the best hitters in the country. And it shows in the numbers, the uh, Arkansas all-time leader in career average as it stands right now, Hannah McEwen, and I would strongly wager that she's not going to give up that crown before her playing days are done. Here is a hog. Good idea by Madison Hunsaker mi mixing in that change up early in the count. And you kind of alluded to it. One of the things that makes Arkansas so dangerous this year is they apply pressure to the opposing pitching staff one through nine in the lineup. Opponents have hit 242 against Hunsaker this season. Popped up into center. And Skyler Shaw makes the catch. Two down. A routine fly ball out there to the freshman Shaw in center field. And you see there McEwen. Talking to Danielle Gibson, Holly Hesse, very complimentary of Arkansas on how quickly they make adjustments, not just at bat to at bat, but batter to batter. And what you just saw from McEwen is one of the reasons why they are so good at relaying information about what they see to the batter that comes after them. Gibson takes the first pitch. One of three Razorback players that sit in double digits in home runs right now. Gibson with 10. Lenny Malkin, who's on deck, has 12 on the year. And then, of course, you have Burnside's 19. Arkansas is a team, 63, second most in the nation, and the school record is 65, which was set in 2008. Pretty sure that's going to be broken here before too long. That could be broken here this afternoon, <laughs> the way that this team ho hits home runs. And just to, to kind of juxtapose these numbers, I guess Braxton Burnside on her own has 19. Missouri State as a team has hit 19 home runs. Hunsaker, good pitch. She had Gibson off balance. And a beautiful off speed there by Hunsaker. And it's going to be a really good weapon with keeping these Razorback hitters off balance. One, two, purpose pitch. Not going to get Gibson on that type, but worth the shot. I like the idea by Hunsaker. You know, it's early in the game. You might be able to get Gibson a little bit more willing to free swing at something that's a little bit close. I went a little bit closer, and Frost holding it for a bit of an extra look, but no doubt it was high. And that's that. Hard curve ball from Madison Hunsaker that she throws. It's going to come in to right-handers, as you can see, tailing away from Danielle Gibson. This ball curling and hooking down the line. Playable, though, and on the move, Bailey Greenlee makes the catch. A lot of space down that right field line, and Arkansas leaves one stranded in the bottom of the first inning, but good pitching by the lefty, Madison Hunsaker. We go to the second, scoreless in Fayetteville. Missouri State and for Autumn Storms retired the Bears 1-2-3 in the first. Here's Darian Frost to lead things off. Pitch low and inside Frost this season. 403 on base percentage to complement the 273 average. High chopper back to the circle. Good job by Storms not to rush it and just ensure the throw was online, and there's one down. You see her there kind of laughing, and I, hitchers don't really field balls all that naturally. She uh, she made that look <laughs> easier than it probably was, took a couple steps back, threw it overhand, and I don't know if you saw, but she was actually on the countdown for top plays of the week. Her diving flip to first base from that Auburn game came in at number two. So Autumn Storm is much more than just a pitcher. She's showing that she can field her position a little bit as well. Just seeing her energy level over the years, I would think she would be all for any ball that comes to her. <laughs> she just wants the, uh, the opportunity to move around out there 
She is so much fun to watch, and you know that she keeps things lighthearted out there for her teammates. As Hunsaker, the pitcher, hitting here for the Bears. Players who can pitch and hit at this level becoming uh, seemingly fewer and fewer as times go on, but Hunsaker showing that she's not just a body in the lineup. She's been able to produce some big time numbers and is the team's leader in RBI, 16 on the year. I see you say it's becoming less and less common. I look at it and say it's more and more common because back when I played in the, in the early 2000s, I'm aging myself a little bit, it's okay, but really pitchers never hit. It, you always had a DP hit and so. Storm's got her. It was a beautiful pitch by, by Storms, but uh, to the point about Hunsaker, just to see more players get out here and be versatile is such a great thing and I think speaks to the growth of the sport, but you take a look there. That's that curve just tailing low and away. It started at the knees and just nothing Hunsaker could do with that. Kelly Metter with two outs and the base is empty, takes a first pitch strike. Better another one of those players that's coming off a little bit of an injury. She's had a recent ankle sprain. Did have a stretch earlier in the season, though, where she was 8 for 16. So someone that can definitely put the bat on the ball and do some damage. The Spares lineup sprinkled with uh, just four right-handed hitters. Storms this year has had a uh, little bit better performance against the left-handed batters than she has the right. Right-handed hitters batting 191 against Autumn Storms, whereas lefties hit 167. On the short hop, Gamble's got it. And it's another one, two, three frame for the Razorbacks. Missouri State retired in order thus far. Arkansas coming to bat in the bottom of the second. Had his hands out signaling a legal pitch. He said she separated and then came back together in the glove. You can't do that before you deliver the pitch to the plate. That's an attention getter, but just hooks foul. We call that a long strike. <laughs> Let's not forget, though, I mean, Braxton Burnside, Hannah McEwen, Daniel Gibson, they get a lot of talk, but Lenny Malkin has a lot of power. She's got 12 home runs on the year. And it was really Malkin and Burnside in that series at South Carolina that provided the majority of the home run pop. A strike, the off speed. Malkin let out a flinch, but even though she got the bat back, it was in the zone and it evens the count at two. Now that changeup has really been working for Madison Hunsaker so far this game. Malkin able to hold up on that one. That one just a little too low, but Hunsaker throws that hard curve that we saw in the first inning, the great change up a backdoor curve. She'll put it in there at about 61 to 62, and one of the things that Holly Hesse noted is she's great with deception. Little check swing foul. And you saw the deception there on that swing by Malk, and she wasn't able to read that it was a change up until she'd already started her swing. That pitch before the catcher, Darian Frost, trying to help her pitcher out, saying at least I'm trying to bargain for you here and uh, <laughs> ask for that appeal. And I love this crew. I've hey, you never know if you don't ask, <laughs> right? That's, that's right. Backing out of play. Chad Steers, the uh, home plate umpire, though, I've, over the years, I don't know how many games I've had where but he always has a firm handle on everything. I see his name uh, on the 
on the uh, lineup card and just know that everything's going to be in order. But the same goes for uh, this crew as well. Anthony Williams at first was waiting on that appeal to come, never stopped looking at home. And the strikeout for Hunsaker, her first of the ball game, and so important in a game like this for Missouri State to retire the leadoff. That's a confidence booster. You go in there and just take a look at Hunsaker, pulls the string on that changeup, Malkin way out in front of it. Hunsaker already shown that she's not afraid to throw it at any count, and it's just such a confidence boost to know that you don't have the pressure of having somebody on base. And now Hannah Gamble, freshman, really swinging it well. 370 average on the year, the on-base percentage over 500, but it's been almost a month since she's been available, and they are certainly glad to have her back especially with the uh, SEC schedule looming with so many tough opponents leading off with third-ranked Alabama this weekend. Yeah, the first ever top 10 series here in Fayetteville coming up this weekend. And we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Gamel has been out. Her final at bat at Central Arkansas, she swung through a rise ball and it got her on the hand. It rolled into fair territory and ended up being a ground out. And just that pitch Hitting her the way that it did is what has caused her to, to miss the last month. Even if in practice you stand in against, you know, live pitching, how vital is it to be prepared to be able to just have at least one game where you're in the box and it is a real game? There's definitely a difference between standing in and playing. It's just a different feel. There's a different intensity to it. And so you just have – it's kind of almost like pinch hitting. You know, having that transition, it's going to take you a couple of at-bats to really feel comfortable in the box again. This ball is driven to deep center field to the track. It's gone. Welcome back, <laughs> Hannah Gamble. Or it takes you one at-bat. <laughs> How about the sixth home run of the season for the freshman? Gamble got all of that offering by Madison Hunsaker and sent it out to the deepest part of the park. That's 220 out there to center field. So we take another look at it. That ball on the outer part of the plate, but just too much of it. And Gamble absolutely hammers it. Ali Monzo will step in. Skyler Shaw out in center gave it a good effort. She timed it right, timed her jump right, it appeared. But just enough on it. Didn't allow her to make a play. That fence is 220 out there. Gamble put it about 225. <laughs> just not quite enough room for Skyler Shaw to get back to it. Back to your point, though, about the leadoff batter and getting them out. That's one of the reasons why it's so important, especially against this Arkansas team, because one of the things that they've been great at this year is getting runners on ahead of their home run hitters. Monzo pulls this down the line foul. We already talked about Sam Torres playing her way into the lineup. Ali Monzo, and none, another one of those players that's made the most of her opportunities. You think back to the Pig Classic. You were on the calls against Drake. It was Monzo that had that big leadoff double in the top of the seventh inning that ended up leading to that Danielle Gibson walk-off grand slam. And really from that point on, Monzo has been a fixture in this Arkansas lineup. And while there's been a fair amount of movement at multiple positions it might be the most impressive thing of it all is even with different lineups, players moving to different spots, there's just no fall off with this team. There's never a moment where they say, well, this is going to take some time to get used to. Give us a few games and then we'll, we'll be back. And that's a testament to Coach Dyfel and her staff and the culture they've built. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that. Monzo into right center. One out double for the senior. Well, that was a, another change up by Madison Hunsaker, and we've seen her have success with it early 
in the game, but that time Ali Monzo keeps her weight back, lets the ball travel into her hitting zone, and then rips her hands through the middle, barrels it up, and sends it out to one hop that fence in right center field. Brings up Kayla Green. Hard hit ball foul on the third base side. Back to your point about the, the lack of drop off, it really speaks to the players that Coach Dyfel has been able to recruit as well. You know, she got here, this is her sixth season at Arkansas, and they've steadily risen every year that she's been here. And she had to go out and recruit. You know, that's a hard job to do to get the right players. Then she got a couple transfers, the Braxton Birdsides, the Danielle Gibsons, and now you see this really well-rounded talented team from top to bottom. Going back to that home run for Hannah Gambler, sixth of the year. This is not a pitcher that will give up a lot of home runs. Only four on the season coming in, given up by Hunsaker, and that in 60 innings pitched. And snagged on the soft liner, Kelsey Lewis makes the play. Monzo back on second quickly. That's a really nice job by Kelsey Lewis, hasn't Gotten a ton of playing time. This is just her 28th game. And that ball had a little knuckle on it from Kayla Green. So you really have to make sure that you pay attention and watch it all the way into your glove. Lewis, of course, getting the start today because Missouri State without Olivia Crable, who's normally the Bears starting third baseman. Keely Huffi into the plate. Takes the first pitch strike. Foul on the third base side from Keeley. Even though Huffine has an 0-2 count here, I really like the aggressiveness of the Arkansas hitter so far. You know, they're taking the first good pitch they see from Hunsaker, and they're getting a really good rip at it. Arkansas's undefeated start in SEC play has seen multiple players contribute. Of course, have the... Big home run weekends that we saw, like from Burnside in the first two games of the Auburn series. But Huffine has had a role, and multiple players have done their part and uh, done crucial things at the end. Huffine had the walk-off homer in the final game of the Ole Miss series here at home as this lofted into shallow left. No problems for Kelly Metter, and the side retired. But Arkansas moves in front. A one-out solo home run in her first at bat in almost a month, Hannah Gamble putting the Razorbacks in front as we go to the third. Two innings in the books here in Fayetteville, and Arkansas out in front, 1-0, courtesy of a solo homer from Hannah Gamble. We move into the third. Autumn Storms face the minimum six thus far, and here's Kelsey Lewis to lead off. Takes a first pitch strike. We mentioned Healy Huffine for Arkansas kind of doing a little bit of everything. That's been Kelsey Lewis for this Bears team. She started at second base with Peyton Minnis out with the shoulder injury. Today's playing third, and she was a shortstop before coming to college, so she's another one of those players that's incredibly versatile on the infield. Strikeout for Autumn Storms, her third of the ball game. 
Autumn Storm is wasting no time. Went after Kelsey Lewis in three straight pitches. You take a look, that drop curve just started at knee height and fell off the table as it crossed the plate. Beautiful pitch by Autumn Storms. Skyler Shaw looking for the element of surprise there as she showed bunt, but the pitch got passed. That's a good idea by Shaw. Offense hasn't had a whole lot of success against Autumn Storms this first time through. A strike, one and two now with one out in the top of the third. No one aboard for the Bears. And Shaw turned away like she didn't really like that and saw a turn and asked Chad Steers if it was on the swing or the pitch. My guess is he told her it was the pitch because that ball was in the exact same spot and Shaw had to foul it away to stay alive. Working herself back into the count, evens the count at two. With uh, how aggressive Missouri State was early on in this game at the plate, saw a lot of uh, first pitch offerings. Another strikeout, that's four, but the two strike approach seems like has some more emphasis if you're gonna be aggressive early in the count against Autumn Storms. I mean, it's kind of a trade off as we take a look at this Pinch from Autumn this time. Again, that just drop curve. It's so beautiful, the late breaking movement. Once you've decided to swing, it's already past you. But it, it's a trade off. If you're going to swing early in the count, if you don't make contact, you can swing yourself into these 1 2 0 oh, 2 counts. Then you have to be confident in your ability to either foul off enough pitches to work yourself a walk or get something that you're going to hit. So we call it being selectively aggressive. And what I mean by that is, you know, you can swing early in the count, but only swing at something that's in your power zone. Even if it's not quite where you want it to be, you need to let it go. Braxton Burnside for Arkansas does a great job of that. One, two. I like the idea by Storms there to go a little off speed. It's a great idea with a lefty who's running, trying to slap the ball. It oftentimes can be really hard for them to stop and make contact. Just got a piece to stay alive. And again, Greenlee hanging tough up there. One of the things that Holly Hesse told us is that she really wanted to see her team focus in on their approach at the plate. She didn't love how they went about their at-bats during their series at Bradley, and it's something that they really hammered before they came to Arkansas for this game. Got her. Greenlee hung in and covered up the strike zone for a bit, but Autumn Storm strikes out the side. Five for the ball game. And we move for the bottom of the third inning. Arkansas in a one nothing lead and Autumn Storms on our game today. Uh, the first two strikeouts were on the drop. That one rose up and out of the zone. Bailey Greenlee running away and Autumn Storms. Arkansas as many looks as they can, keep them as off balance as they can. Sam Torres comes in on an 11 game hit streak and has reached safely in 15 consecutive, and that goes back to the beginning of her role in the starting lineup.
hitting 414 now for the season and the on-base percentage at 493. And she's been even better than that in conference play. She's six in the conference in batting average. She's upped it to 429. There in March 27th against Mississippi State, two for three with a career high three RBI in that game. Called strike three. Hunsaker found the spot and gets Torres looking. That's something you don't see very often from Sam Torres as a strikeout looking. And Hunsaker that time, that's that curveball that tails away from lefties. Started at the middle of the plate and just broke all the way to the outside. Beautiful out pitch from Madison Hunsaker. Braxton Burnside takes the first pitch and would imagine this would be more of the same. Not going to see a whole lot probably near the zone. You have to feel a little bit better about throwing to Burnside without anybody on, but still, you know, we I asked uh, Holly Hesse about how you pitch to a Braxton Burnside. She goes, there's this thing called a four-pitch walk. <laughs> I'm sure it's frustrating for a hitter of Burnside's potential, but really she's earned this by virtue of being so good here at the start of this season. Well, you mentioned the element too, and at least situationally right now, the element of nobody on base, but also being able to do it with one out. Now, if she's the leadoff, it's maybe a little bit different story. You're not perhaps as comfortable because getting that leadoff aboard can be so dangerous, especially when you're already trailing, but getting Sam Torres especially big because now they can be so careful to Burnside since there's already one out and your odds of allowing her to score if you put her on, of course, decreasing significantly. Full count now. Burnside already let the first changeup go. As you see, that one came in 45 miles an hour, so you're talking a 15 mile an hour difference from what she's usually throwing to the changeup. It was a good job by Burnside to keep her weight back. And Braxton Burnside, we know she can hit a changeup. She hit one 299 feet out to the parking lot earlier in the year. So a little bit of a risk from Hunsaker. Playable in left center and Metter trots on to make the catch. That was a good swing by Burnside. She just got it off the end of the bat. So even though it came off hard, it just kind of died as it got out there into the outfield. And we talked about feeling good about getting the leadoff batter out. You got to feel great anytime that you can retire Braxton Burnside. Anna McEwen with two outs takes a first pitch strike. She's one of those that you just have an extra sense of confidence in if she falls behind in the count because she doesn't expand her strike zone. You're not going to get her to change who she is in one plate appearance. So even now, for her, the at-bat is just beginning down 0-2 in the count. Well, that comes from experience. Hannah McEwen, a red shirt junior. She's you know, played at this level, started since she got here. She has a lot of games under her belt. and. You know, you mentioned her strike zone. She's got one of the best eyes in college softball. One of the things that really separates her as a hitter is she learns the strike zone in her first at bat, and she will work from that point on. This ball is peppered to the gap in left center. One hopper to the fence. It's a two-out double for Hannah McEwen. Now, doubles are really Hannah McEwen's M.O. You talk about not changing the kind of hitter that she is. She hits a lot of doubles. That ball on the outer part of the plate. McEwen lets it travel and just stays off of her back foot, sends it out into left center, doesn't try and do too much with it, and the result is a two-out double into the gap. It's her seventh double of the season. The only player with more is Gibson, who's got 14 on the year. For Gibson, that is best in the country. Hunsaker was able to retire Gibson on a fly ball that drifted foul down the right field line the first time up. This ball hit hard into left center and it'll score McEwen. Arkansas doubles their lead with a two out rally. 
Danielle Gibson coming through with her 36th RBI of the year. Really nice piece of hitting there by Danielle Gibson. She was aggressive. And again, Hunsaker trying to throw that curve that tails away from the lefties. And now we've seen back-to-back -back batters let it travel. Gibson barreled it up, shot it past Plummer there at short and drove in Hannah McEwen. And now you see here comes Holly Hesse. She's going to have a conversation with, uh, with Hunsaker and Darian Frost. And she's... This inning was going fine for Missouri State. First two batters retired, but then Hannah McEwen, the double to left center, and Danielle Gibson on the first pitch. Base hit into left center to score McEwen, and Arkansas doubling their lead. Well, it really goes back to what you were talking about with McEwen comfortable hitting in that 0-2 count because that was an 0-2 double that she ripped to the fence. So Arkansas not at all concerned about hitting down in the count. She was an 0-2 pitch, and then Danielle Gibson ripped the first one she saw. Malkin crushes this foul down the left field line. And so far, all three of the pitches from Johnson have been on the inner half of the plate. And the thing that you have to be careful with is you either need to bring it so far in that they're only going to be able to get the handle of the bat on it, or you need to throw it hard enough that you're going to get it past them. Because at this level and with this lineup, each player is strong enough and has hands fast enough to get it through the zone. He got a glove on it. I got to mark it in error. <laughs> well, this, this crowd at Vogel Park, they, they want and demand quality <laughs> defense. And whether you're in the field of play or in the stands, you've got to make the play. Well, normally we see the the adult give it to the kid. Same thing, and unfortunately, they're going to have to ask for it back, though. This gets away, and Gibson to second. Now into scoring position. This changes things a little bit. Sixth wild pitch of the year from Johnson. That one just sailed too high all the way to the backstop, and you can't afford to give Arkansas free bases, especially when you're already down two runs. Upstairs with first base already open. I think that was probably the safest move is don't take any chances with Malkin. And, and even though, you know, that being said, but the players step into the plate, crushed one out of here to center <laughs> field last time up. But it's still kind of a uh, tactical move on first base open. Let's just uh, get a new batter and get a new count going here. A little conversation as Darian Frost had left the game. She's going to go ahead and re-enter here. And our pitcher, she throws a screw curve, an off-speed curve, and a rise ball. Throws 62 to 63, and she is at her best when she is jamming hitters and then using that off-speed curve ball as she delivers the first pitch to Gamble for a strike. Missouri State had done initially put Gracie Johnston, who came into pitch, she was initially in the flex position. So they put her there. Dickerson will come in for her in the flex, and that allows them to keep Hunsaker, the starting pitcher, as the DP and thus in the hitting lineup. It's the beauty of softball and baseball, mm -hmm. right? All the interesting lineup changes. When you have versatile players like that, being able to use it, to its full ability, and this just sneaks past the diving glove of Lewis. Gibson in to score, and Hannah Gamble having quite the return. Homered in her first at bat. She's got a two-out RBI hit here. It was a good idea by Dickerson, an 0-2 changeup, and Gamble just does a really great job of keeping her weight back, sees it all the way, and just unloads on it. Kelsey Lewis. Almost got a glove on it, but just hit too sharply for her to come up with the play. Monzo takes the first pitch strike. Ali Monzo doubled 
last time up. She followed that Hannah Gamble home run with a double to right center. Talked about multiple players that have stepped up and been key contributors in the 12-0 start in SEC play. Monzo had a home run in the middle game of the South Carolina series. And then in the matchup against Ole Miss, had a crucial bunt. It helped Arkansas in their comeback effort. Well, she's always been a spark player and still providing that even when she's not coming off the bench. Had one of the better weekends against Auburn, hit 500 for the series. To third, Lewis has got it. She'll step on the bag for the force and the side retired. Arkansas though, two runs in the bottom of the third. Danielle Gibson and Hannah Gamble each with RBI 2019 in the last meeting, a 2-1 narrow victory for the Razorbacks over in Springfield, Missouri. Well, these are two programs that play every year. In fact, Missouri State was coming up on the schedule for the Razorbacks when the season was canceled. Last year, they had a game set for Fayetteville for March the 17th. And as we know, the season ended on March 11th, not just for the Razorbacks, but for the majority of sports across the country on that date. Plummer draws the leadoff walk. And that's something the Bears needed. Just needed a base runner and something to maybe just break up the momentum and the zone that Autumn Storms was in, retiring the first nine hitters. You saw a little bit of frustration there by Autumn Storms, and you never want to walk a batter. This back up the middle, sneaks through. First pitch, Peyton Menace. The leadoff walks come back to haunt you. And it's something that pitchers absolutely loathe and menace jumping on that first pitch from Autumn Storms. That one just tailed right back into the heart of the plate. Braxton Burnside shading towards third on the left-handed hitter. Didn't have enough time to be able to recover back towards the center of the field. Weekly showing bunt and it gets passed. Weekly looks down and gets the sign on what her instructions are. The third base coach is Beth Perrine. Here's the bunt laid down. Gamble's got it. And over to Huffine. Sack bunt, 5-4. to four. And Weekly does her job. They get two in scoring position here with one out. That was a beautifully executed sacrifice bunt by Weekly. She knew what her job was going up to the plate. She squared early and she sat. She let the ball travel to her. And the most important thing that she did is she pushed the ball towards Hannah Gamble at third and it gave Gamble no other choice but then to go and get the out at first. Darian Frost takes strike. A little bit of life down in the Missouri State dugout. Slow roller, Burnside makes the sure out to first as the speed of Plummer, she had a pretty good break and Burnside goes to first to get out number two. That's the right decision by Burnside, even charging that ball, it wasn't hit hard enough. And with a 3-0 lead at that point, you never wanna take a chance at maybe getting an out at home and potentially extending the inning if you don't get the out. With that cushion, always get the sure out. Eighth RBI of the season for Darian Frost. The pitcher, Madison Hunsaker, who was uh, replaced in the third inning but stays in the game, just moves to the DP spot. Big opportunity for her. A 
have a player they call Rocket. If there's someone you want up in this opportunity, Madison Hunsaker is definitely the person the Bears want in this spot. Just foul, third base side. Hunsaker has been one of those players that has come through in big moments. She had a home run in the Bears' upset win over number 23, Iowa State. That was a 3-1 victory on March the 7th at a tournament in Arlington. We asked Coach Hesse about some of the late game heroics that have happened in, by multiple different players, and she's been one of those. She had two home runs in the game against Northern Iowa. Hopper to second, no problems for Huffine. A leadoff walk comes around to score on a ground out from Darian Frost, but that's all. Eight nine one to bat for the Razorbacks in the bottom of the fourth. Missouri State getting on the board. And now they'll look to the senior from Oklahoma City, Stephanie Dickerson in the circle to hold Arkansas at bay. But this ball is struck well to left center and out of here. Kayla Green on the first pitch here in the bottom of the fourth. Socks her fifth homer of the year. Kayla Green swings a bat with a lot of pop, and you saw it on that one because that ball hit on a line. It got out of here in a hurry over the left center field fence. Very first pitch she sees from Stephanie Dickerson. That ball on the inner half of the plate didn't cut quite as much as Dickerson would have liked, and Green jumped all over it. Arkansas reinstates their three-run lead. First pitch strike to Keeley Huffine. And that's really the best way to respond after giving up an inning in your defensive half. Come right back out, get on base, get a runner in. Daphne Plummer makes the play at short. And on the flip side of that, there's really no bigger momentum killer. If you're, Momo, if you're Missouri State, you go out, you're feeling good, you got to run in, and first pitch that Arkansas sees right back out of the ballpark. Good recovery by Stephanie Dickerson. And that's no surprise, really, for a veteran pitcher. Just forget about it and move on, right? Absolutely, it's the best thing that you can do is have an incredibly short memory. And Dickerson, you know, we've mentioned the veteran of this squad, and she's pitching some very big games for this team. She shut out Baylor in a complete game in 2020, threw a one nothing loss at Minnesota, 3-2 loss at Oklahoma. So she is not at all intimidated by this Arkansas team. Count even at one now to Torres. Well, she threw against Arkansas as well. That last matchup between these two in 2019, five innings, three hits, no earned runs, two runs total. But a very good outing there and gave her team a chance to win. It was errors that ended up costing the Bears on that day in a 2-1 defeat. And that's all that you can ask is, for a chance to be in these ball games that lost to Arkansas, one of 11 for Stephanie Dickerson that year. She ended 2019, 20 and 11. She was the first pitch, pitcher for Missouri State to win 20 games in a season since 2011, back when Natalie Rose went 22 and 19 and 49 appearances. Of course, 2011, Missouri State won the MVC and ended up going to the regionals that year. She was well-deserving of the all-region selection. Back 
Foul tip finds the mitt of Darian Frost and the strikeout for Dickerson. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. And she's a testament to a very good talent pool in the softball capital of the world, Oklahoma City. <laughs> Arkansas has got one from that area as well, of course, in Audrey LaValle. Just angled foul on the chopper. And Burnside again taking her hacks where she can get them. And the crazy thing about Braxton Burnside is some of the home runs she's hit have been on really bad balls. She's hit home runs on ball four before just because she doesn't want to walk. This ball is way up there. Going back, kiss it, goodbye. Home run number 20 for Braxton Burnside. And you see the smile on her face right there. She's thrilled to finally get a ball that she can handle, and she hit that one about a mile high. Out over the left center field fence. And she is ecstatic. You'd think she never hit a home run before, let alone 20. That ball in the center of the plate, and one of the things that makes Braxton Burnside such a great hitter she uses her entire body. She never gets cheated on a swing and the torque that she gets. She reminds me of a Major League Baseball player, that full extension that she gets with her entire body. And the result is those big booming home runs like that one. Anna McEwen takes a first pitch strike. Well, and with the wind uh, already blowing out, Towards uh, left and left center, it's been a little bit shifty, but when you put it up that high, it allows it to get the full effect of that wind at its back and just carried on out. Even with no wind, that ball still gets out of here. But That part of the park, about 225 feet. Braxton Burnside hit that probably 240 or 250. She doesn't need any help from the wind. Backhanded by Weekly. She'll tag the bag herself and the side retired. A pair of solo home runs for the Razorbacks in the bottom of the fourth, three for the ball game. And Arkansas out in front of Missouri State, five to one. We Arkansas with two more runs in the bottom of the fourth, both off solo homers and it's a five one Razorback lead. Back to the circle for Hannah Storms. Kelly Metter leads off for Missouri State. They've been happy to have her back coming off uh, ankle sprain, but uh, both these teams know what it's like to play uh, shorthanded throughout the season and having to mix and match and figure out what's going to work best in the moment with what you have. But Metter certainly one of those players that they really feel the impact of when she's not in there. A 292 hitter, the senior, almost 100 points better on the on base percentage. Storms had her off balance, and Green will throw down to first to complete the strikeout. We haven't seen Storms use that off speed a whole lot this game, but it has been very effective in the spots that she's used it. That drop curve just falls off the table, and it really goes back to what Coach Hesse told us earlier this week is her team really didn't handle hitting the drop ball very well all weekend against Bradley. And again today, you know, only one hit on the board for the Bears. Beth Perrine, you saw there, 
Associate head coach, 26th year in this program. The first base coach is Sue Frederick, who's in her 31st year with the program. And Holly Hesse, the head coach, in her 33rd year. If only there was a way to download all that softball knowledge <laughs> to uh, somebody else's mind. I'd take it in a second. She was so much fun to talk to. But one of the things that Coach Hesse talked about is the mental approach to the game and something that she kind of adopted very, very early on in her coaching career. As the play made there to retire Lewis, two down in the inning. And Coach Hesse has probably forgotten more softball than I will ever know. She's been coaching Missouri State almost as long as I've been alive. But, you know, she really did focus in on the mental aspect of the game. She said that she thought it was even more important than all the physical reps that the team takes you know, during the week, they talk about visualization, they talk about breathing, they talk about your sleep. All of these things go into making good athletes. They have very uh, similar and some exercises are the exact same from practice to games. No difference in what they do, but she talked about, goes back to the 80s for her whenever they started focusing on the mental aspect of the game as Autumn storms her seventh strikeout of the ball game and goes one, two, three in the fifth. Arkansas leads it five to one. Things off for the Razorbacks. Who now have a new program record for home runs in a season. Arkansas came in with 63, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, and the uh, program record 65 back in 2008. And now this group holds it all to their self. And the question, as you pointed out in between innings, isn't so much what it is, it's what <laughs> it will be by the time that this season is over. And, you know, one of the things that has been so amazing to me is that you know their power numbers are great but as a team you know Arkansas's batting average is actually towards the bottom of the SEC they're 11th out of 13 programs Gibson is one of those who will bring any team's average up, though. 389 on the year, and it's one of her best years thus far. Hitting for average, the Arizona State transfer. Had no problems adjusting after coming <laughs> here to Fayetteville. Instant impact. When you talk about not much of a drop off, if there's a league that's as difficult top to bottom as the SEC, it's the Pac-12. And the Pac-12 has been a power for a long, long time, going back to when I was in high school. You think of UCLA, the Cal Bears, of course, Courtney Diefel, part of those great programs that went to the Women's College World Series. But Danielle Gibson has brought that here to Fayetteville. Payoff is hit hard to center field. This is gone. Danielle Gibson's 11th homer of the season. It is turning into a home run party this afternoon at Bogle Park as Danielle Gibson sends that one out. And coming off a uncharacteristic 0 for weekend at Auburn. Courtney Diefel told us she just thought Danielle Gibson didn't see the ball very well down there on the plains. It certainly seems that she's seeing the ball well here this afternoon as, again, Dickerson just leaves that ball too much in the center of the plate. And at 61-62, it's not going to be enough to get it past these Arkansas hitters. Danielle Gibson has some of the best bat speed in the country. Just whips that bat through the hitting zone. Brings up Lenny Malkin. Dickerson is not a pitcher who will give up a lot of home runs. She came in for the season, just three homers given up in 
79 and a third innings pitched. And you mentioned the other big performances that she's had against good programs, but Arkansas showing off just how dangerous they are, and it could come at any spot in the order. Hitting like this is contagious, too. You know, you see McEwen really open things up there in the second with the double, and, you know, that leads to the Daniel Gibson single. And once you start rolling, momentum is a very real thing when you're batting through an order, especially an order as good as this Arkansas one is. Pitch taken to even the count of two from Malkin. Malkin, top 15 in the country in homers and RBI. That swing right there is an example of how Arkansas had just at bat to at bat because if you think back to Malkin's first at bat she struck out swinging at that change up she had gotten fooled on a few by Hunsaker and I know it's a different pitcher but still the discipline this time to be able to at least keep your weight back enough to foul it off speaks volumes about how well Arkansas makes adjustments as they go through the game. Malkin just got a piece. Well, of all the home runs this year for Lenny Malkin, while we're on the subject, one of the uh, more dramatic was that go-ahead two-run homer in the 14th inning at McNeese State earlier this year. That's a great eye by Malkin on that one, but you're right, she had that one against McNeese State. She hit the go-ahead home run in the top of the fourth inning in that Sunday game at South Carolina to clinch the series. That ended up being the first time Arkansas had swept a road conference series since 2009. Hit high and deep to left center. Kiss that goodbye. Gibson and Malkin go back to back to start the fifth. And again, we've mentioned it. You know, this Arkansas lineup, one to nine, they put so much pressure on the opposing pitcher, and this is exactly why everyone in this lineup has hit a home run at some point this year as Gibson and Malkin go back to back. It's the fifth time that the Hogs have gone back to back this year. We get back to uh, the spot where the home run parade started today. Hannah Gamble in her first game back. One out solo shot back in the second. You talked about the mental training that Coach Hesse had spoken so highly of us today. This is a situation where it really comes into play. You're down 7-1 in the bottom of the fifth. There's no outs. Arkansas went, just went back to back. What are you going to do? How are you going to dig in against that adversity? And she really talked about their book of the year, Chop Wood, Carry Water. She says that book really has the philosophy and the mentality that this team embodies. That curled foul early off the bat of Gamble.
2-2 pitch. Angled foul on the third base side. Third time this season, Arkansas has hit five homers in a ball game. Did it first against Texas Tech. And then a week later against Northwestern State. Those numbers are just, to use the word that is overused, those numbers are just insane. You just don't see that kind of power every day. I think, you know, it really gives you pause to stop and appreciate how talented this Arkansas lineup is. Through the left side. Four consecutive hits were home runs for Arkansas. That's the uh, first non-home run since the third inning. And Gamble, who was the first batter to face Dickerson, has got her third hit of the ball game. Now that was off speed once again. And for the second at bat, Gamble does a really nice job keeping her weight back, making sure she lets the ball travel to her. And Courtney Dyfel has been so complimentary of Gamble. You know, it's to watch her play, it's easy to forget that she's just a true freshman. You know, out here, especially coming back after this layoff, doesn't look like she's missed any time at all. But Courtney Dyfel said that in terms of making adjustments, which, which we've talked, you know, extensively about during this game, Gamble might actually be the best one making adjustments within the, own, within the same at bat. She'll adjust pitch to pitch. Let me take a look at Courtney Dyfel there and the fastest to reach 150 wins as the head coach at Arkansas. And under her tenure, Arkansas has just exploded onto the national scene. And Josh, you and I talked about this before the broadcast started to do what Courtney has done in a conference like the SEC that is stacked from top to bottom is incredibly difficult. Arkansas, the uh, redshirt sophomore Larissa Sasania from Riverside. Sasania getting an opportunity to bat here against Stephanie Dickerson. Had a good outing on Saturday and a pinch hit opportunity and stayed in to play right field. She was one for two with a double in that win over Auburn. Not an easy thing to do when you consider stepping in the pinch hit role if you haven't had a ton of at-bats throughout the season, but have to step in and do it, especially in conference play. Very impressive. I was just thinking along those exact lines, pinch hitting is such a difficult thing to do. You've been sitting on the bench all day. It's a nice cut as that ball just rose up out of the zone, but it takes a really special person to be able to, to come in in a pinch hit opportunity and be successful. Arkansas is a team this year, 216 in pinch hitting. Sasania went with a little bit more of the running slapper look on that one, took a couple steps forward. Shot it off, foul to the left side.
That was one of the things I was always so jealous about, about lefty hitters. I was a righty, and, and no one would have ever accused me of being fast, but lefties, there's so many different things that they can do. You know, Sam Torres does it really well. Sasania's showing it here. You can power slap. You can hit away. You know, you can really top it into the ground and get that high chopper. It's just so – they're so versatile. Called strike three. Dickerson got the spot. Good pitch. Really big pitch for Dickerson there, given how the inning has started. Comes back. That's a curve, just tailing away. And Sasania, who's running towards Dickerson, can't react to it in time. Green, a towering fly ball to deep left center. It's gone. It's a walk off and it's a program record for the Razorbacks. Second homer in the game for Green and six in a single ball game is a new Arkansas record. Arkansas brought the bats today. Six home runs, nine runs scored that last 